Hi guys. Oh my gosh. I figured out how to work the camera. So I'm really excited. Sorry. I just had to let you know. Um, <laughs> so now you can have me in the privacy of your own homes. Uh, isn't that exciting? Okay. Anyways, let's get down to business. <laughs> All right. So um, 7.3 is all about um, sampling means, and we've done sampling proportions before, um, and we kind of figured out that under certain conditions, uh, the sampling distribution of the proportions um, of p hat um, has the same mean as the true population proportion, so that's cool. So we want to figure out if that's the same kind of a scenario with means. So we're going to look at a couple situations. Number one being a burrito eating contest, which I don't know if we should actually do this. It'd be kind of fun, but I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, so <laughs> that's kind of our goal. Um, we're going to be finding the mean standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a sample mean. Um, from a certain size and of a sampling, a uh, simple random sample. And then we'll probably, hopefully, be able to calculate some probabilities after we do that as well, um, after we make a certain assumptions or kind of figure out if one thing is, um, if our sampling distribution is approximately normal. So we got to prove that first before we can do any normal calculations, unfortunately. Okay, so. Is x bar a good estimator of mu? Well, picture this scenario. We want to figure out the average amount of burritos a Dawson student can eat in one setting before, you know, having to throw them back up. Yay, that's so much fun. Okay, so we could do one of two things. One, we could find the actual true mean number of burritos by making every single person in Dawson eat a burrito until they pass out, essentially. Or, so the problem with that is that the little kids, I would feel really, I think that's like cruel and unusual punishment. So I think we probably shouldn't do that. So instead, we should probably do a random sample Hopefully in a random sample we don't get any of the little peanuts because that would be really mean to make them throw up from burritos. So we take a simple random sample of 15 people and then we find the mean of that sample and then we could use that as an estimate. So we're going to actually look at some data. Say we actually did this scenario and on the left we have the um, percent of people um, who ate a certain number of burritos. So we've got the majority of our people somewhere between zero and ten burritos. That's a lot of burritos. But there were just a few people out here who could actually eat 25 burritos without dying, which is kind of weird. Um, but the most important thing is that um, our mean is approximately right there, okay? Um, and then imagine that we took a sample of a certain size, okay, size 15, okay? Um, and every time we took a sample of size 15, we found the mean of it, and then we put it on this plot, okay? So basically it's the distribution of the means, right? The sampling distribution of the means. Okay. Um, and so you see here, this is the percent of samples and this is the percent of people. So hopefully that makes a little more sense. Okay. So if you notice, the mean is about in exactly the same area, which is super awesome and nifty. Okay. So here's the deal. As long as the 10% condition is met, same 10% condition as before, because this checks um, for what, uh, whether or not we can actually get a, a normal-ish looking type of distribution, right? Um, and we end up getting the mean and the standard deviation, 
of the sample distribution. So if we have our 10% condition, then we can get a certain amount of information. So the mean of our sampling distribution, as long as our 10% condition is met, um, is mu sub x bar, which that's going to end up being the same as the mean of the population. So the true number of burritos that somebody could eat, the true mean number of burritos that Dawson can eat. Okay. Additionally, your standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar is sigma sub x bar, right? Because it's the uh, standard deviation of the sample means, and that's going to be equal to the um, the true standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. Okay, so some one thing to note is that as your sample size increases, right, the denominator gets larger and therefore the standard deviation gets smaller. Therefore your variability, the thing when you had the, you know, here's your um, normal distribution, right, and the larger your sample gets, the smaller, I mean the skinnier kind of it gets because your root n, because your n is larger, so your standard deviation gets smaller. Ooh. Okay, so that's super exciting. Another awesome and super exciting thing is that if you have both conditions, right, that the 10% condition is met, and the original population is normally distributed, okay, so think about the original population has to be approximately normally distributed, okay? Usually we don't know much about the population, so a lot of times we're not going to know that for sure. That's something we're going to talk about tomorrow. But for now, we have to assume that the population is normally distributed and has a certain mean and standard deviation. And then we can make some, some other observations. Then we can say that the sampling distribution of x bar is also normally distributed with the mean mu. Right, it's got the same mean, and the standard deviation is the standard deviation we calculated, well, that I told you about above, right? Um, sigma over root n. Cool thing is, both of those are on your handy dandy formula packet from um, the AP Stats people. Yay, that's exciting. All right, so let's try an example. We have the length of human pregnancies from, con from conception to birth varies according to a distribution that's approximately normal with a mean of 266 days and standard deviation of 16 days. Okay, keywords are the population is approximately normal and we have a mean and a standard deviation. Okay, so. Uh, it says, find the probability that a randomly chosen pregnant woman has a pregnancy that lasts for more than 270 days. Show your work. Okay, so the main, the really important thing to note here is that we know the population mean. Okay, so we don't need to estimate it. So that's kind of silly, right? Eventually we're going to get to the point where we know only stuff about samples and we need to fi figure out things about the population but we haven't gotten to that point yet. And so right now we're saying, okay, we know it's normally distributed, it's got 266 days, standard deviation of 16 days. So it says find the probability that a randomly chosen pregnant woman has a pregnancy that lasts for more than 270 days. Then show your work, okay. Then the next question is, suppose we choose a simple random sample of six pregnant women and we want x bar to be the mean pregnancy length for the sample. Okay, so let's take a look at how to answer these questions. Okay, so for the first question, right, they're just asking about a randomly chosen person. So we're looking at the population as a whole. Okay, so we're looking at that actual normal distribution, and this is for number one, the normal distribution with the mean of 266 days, standard deviation is 16 days, ok, 
okay? So we want to know what's the probability that a pregnancy lasts for more than 270. So here's 270, and we want to figure out this probability, okay? So that's super easy. We just go to our handy-dandy calculator. We do our distributions. We do our normal distribution. And we plug in our lower bound, which is negative infinity, negative E99, or just a really negative, really big negative number, um, to 270. Uh, the mean is 266. And our standard deviation is 16. Enter, paste, figure out a probability. Oh, and we get the probability of that occurring. Um, oh, aha, read carefully, Miss Patchen. Okay, <laughs> it says the probability that the pregnant lasts for more than 270 days, right? I found up to 270 days, so I need to do 1 minus that answer. So I'm going to do 1 minus my answer, hit enter, and I end up with that probability is 0.4013. Okay, next question. What's the mean? Um, okay, so suppose you, which is a simple random sample of six women, so n is six. Let x bar be the mean pregnancy length for the sample. What's the mean of the sampling distribution x bar? Well, hmm, I don't know. You gotta check your conditions. One, is it approximately normal? Is the population approximately normal? Yes. And is six less than or equal to 10% of your population? 10% of um, my population is the human race, the female half of it. Um, yes, this is true. So then we can just say that the mean of the sampling distribution is, in fact, equal to the mean of the population, 266. Standard deviation, same thing. Oh, we had to check the 10% condition. Already did it. Huh, cool. All right, so then we can just calculate that using the formula. So I'm trying to do this before I run out of time. <clears throat> so, um, in my so when I try to calculate my sigma, um, I want to do sigma over root n, which is 16 over the square root of six, and that is equal to 6.53, as you can see on the calculator. Um, I don't know why this isn't working right now. So hold on, let me check. There we go. Sorry, my. Um, thing wasn't working for a second. Okay, <clears throat> so last but not least we have the question about um, finding the probability that the mean pregnancy length for the women in the sample exceeds 270 days. Show your work. Okay, so keep in mind that the sampling distribution is the distribution of the means of every single possible sample that you could possibly have. Okay, so in order to do this we need to set up the sampling distribution and figure out how often in a sample of six are you going to get larger than 270 days. Okay, so here's my sampling distribution. My mean is 266, same as the, uh, the population. Although my sigma is different, my standard deviation is a little different, right? I figured that out, that's 6.53. And so now all I need to know is the probability that the mean pregnancy length exceeds 270 days. Okay, so that's in a, a given sample of six people, okay, six women. So um, I'm looking for this proportion, and I can use my calculator to figure that out. So I go to second distribution, normal CDF, plug in all my info, I want 270, and I want to go to infinity, mean is 266, Standard deviation is 6.53. Enter, 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 and I get 0.27. So my probability of getting something that ex uh, 270 or more extreme is 27%. And I'm sorry, just because I have 20 seconds left, go.